Kardashian and the medic. Medic! Medic! Oh, don't worry. Just a little graze. Some dressing should take care of it. Anyway, the Ulu Pandan camp was only a school of military medicine from the 1990s onward. What? Ah, we went back too far in time. Wait, wait, wait. Nested on the hilly terrace slope in the west of Singapore was the School of Military Medicine. But going further back in time, Ulu Pandan Camp was built to house the 1st Singapore Infantry Regiment, or 1SIR as it is commonly known. 1SIR was the nation's very first battalion of regular soldiers and it was formed in 1957 as Singapore was on the path towards self-government. How did 1SIR evolve over the years? How it started was, as you know, that Singapore was a British colony. We were part of the Singapore Military Force, and then we became part of Malaysian Armed Forces. Then they changed our name to Malaysian Infantry Regiment. And then when we came back, we changed back to our original name, so 1SIR. Seen through the times, all three flags. Could you share with us some of your fond memories uh, in this camp? We were very active as 1SIR. They used to have internal competition, like drill competition, then sports competition with the other British Army. And uh, we used to win every year, the team of, from 1SIR. The British were actually very good in motivating the soldiers, inculcating a sense of pride. And I think I learned a lot from them to try to generate the same kind of spirit in our modern SAF. Can you share with us the pride of being with 1SIR? And I remember taking part in the parade on this particular square. One of the moments which I cherish in my memory very vividly until today is the participation in the presentation of regimental colours to 1SIR by then Head of State, Young Di Putuan Negara, Encik Yusuf Ishak. I remember it was my first parade as a soldier. My parents came to see the parade. That also gives you a sort of a sense of pride being the pioneers in the SMF. In 1969, 1SIR relocated to Gilimak Camp. The School of Military Medicine then moved into Ulu Pandan Camp in 1990. It trained medics and medical officers. I really did this when I was a soldier. In 1996, I got posted to the combat medic course after I finished my basic military training. We were constantly asked to run with our stretchers. Yup, during my NSF days, I was combat medic Corporal Heng Tikok. And Ulu Pandan Camp here was my home for three memorable months. Although Ulu Pandan Camp has now been converted into a student hostel, many of its architectural structures remain intact. Don't you think this whole area looks very familiar? Oh, definitely, Ben. Where we're sitting right now used to be the canteen. And around us, outside, they all used to be open training sheds. We could do all kinds of training in there, from very, very basic bandaging skills, to advanced intravenous life infusion training, as well as some stretcher drills as well within the training shed. So how do you think the trainings inculcated a sense of pride and responsibility in our combat medic? They could be called upon to use the skill anytime during their national service period. For example, when they're covering a standard optical course test or IPPT test or live firing, the ones who are providing the medical cover for real on-site will indeed be the combat medics that we train in this camp. And I think knowing very well that they are training to perform a task is something that could be used to save a life anytime from the day they walk out of the camp gave them this sense of immense pride. So what would you say is the crowning achievements of our medics? Well, I'll say our crowning achievements at the Medical Corps is our participation in multiple humanitarian assistance and disaster relief operations. So Ben, I understand that you have, you have had some experience in uh, overseas peacekeeping type of operations. So could you, could you give me an example? Okay, I was uh, deployed in two missions before. Um, the first one was for the Suke MI-185 crash to provide medical support together with my MO. 
And the second one was uh, in the Cambodia um, Civil War. You know, in those situations, all we could see was death and pain. Um, I felt that our services, you know, could make a difference in the lives of those victims. Well, Ben, I must say, I'm, 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 I'm proud of you and I'm glad you have all these memories which you take forward uh, for many years to come. In 2002, School of Military Medicine moved to Nisun Camp. Today, what used to be the home of Singapore's 1st Infantry Battalion and the School of Military Medicine has now been turned into a hostel for tertiary students. Yoha at Ulu Pandan. According to Singapore Land Authority, old army camps are popular site choices for being transformed into hostels. They are spacious and have large greenery and it's easier to adapt the buildings for hostel use. This episode is definitely a walk down the memory lane for me. I remember resting in my bunk, just up there, with my fellow medic trainees after hours and hours of grueling trainings every day. As you can tell from my chat with Dr. Surya, those experiences really taught me the true meaning of contributing as a soldier. That's why I will be forever grateful for the times that I trained as a medic here in Ulu Palan Camp. <laughs>